Good morning, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hi. Well, today there, brethren, uh, we're going to engage in an expository video here. We will be doing an expository video on Psalm 10. Psalm 10 is what we're going to be looking at today. We are basically going to be going verse by verse in this video until we reach uh, uh, verse 12 on to the close of the chapter, verses 12 on to verse 18. Going to see some very interesting things to tie into this video, uh, into this, excuse me, into this psalm that we are looking at. Also, too, I want to just quickly say that um, <laughs> a, a very very big video is coming here very soon um, going to be addressing touch not mine anointed um, actually turning out to be <laughs> quite big quite big got a whole bunch of scriptures we are going to be going through when we get to that um, a whole lot and also too I wanted to mention I had said unto ye, uh, brothers and sisters, that uh, one of the videos that were going to be coming is um, uh, uh, Jesus would want us to wear a mask. And upon looking, um, I've already kind of covered that in a video. Uh, should the Church of the Living God wear a mask? An older video. Uh, you can check that out if you are interested. So that one, eh, not so much, but like I said, touch not mine anointed, um, or touch not my anointed, that, that's going to be very big, and that is coming very soon, Lord willing. But today, Psalm 10, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and the real scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Okay? Let's go. Psalm 10, beginning at verse 1. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Psalm 13, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. And if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath most definitely dealt bountifully with you because you are not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation. You know, being caught up, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 8, and we want verses 6. On to verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 6 on to verse 14. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? You don't know when your time's up, do you? There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death. 
and there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy. Interesting that uh, he mentions the wicked being buried, buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy. Isn't that interesting, huh? And they were forgotten in the city, <clears throat> where they had so done. This is also vanity. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Ah, ah, what does it say in verse 1 in Psalm 10? Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Verse 12. Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Look at that because he feareth not before God. There's a vanity which is done upon the earth, <clears throat> that there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Do sometimes some of you think like, think like, why doth my Lord tarrieth? Why are the wicked getting away with so much? Even so, come Lord Jesus. Psalm 10 verse 1, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? I know that sometimes you feel that. You think that, don't you? Don't you? Uh, looking at uh, Ecclesiastes uh, verse 8, verse 12, and verse 13 again. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it will be well with them that fear God. <clears throat> which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. See, Christians today, especially the ones that go to these church buildings, okay? It's, all, it's not about the fear of the Lord. It's about what the Lord can do for you for your best life now. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 2 in Psalm 10. <clears throat> the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. So see verse 1. David's talking about, you know, why hidest thou thy face, you know? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Then he mentions the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Exodus. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. Uh, you read, uh, as we read this, you're going to note that um, Psalm 10 is basically addressing the wicked. Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 9. <clears throat> and afterwards, and afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, 
Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Look at this. Check this out. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Now, hold up. That is an amazing, a wonderful <laughs> statement, isn't it? Look at it. Now, you have to remember, for our instruction in righteousness, again, when reading the Old Testament like this, especially in Exodus in the first five books of Moses, Egypt likened onto a type of the world, Pharaoh likened onto a type of Satan, okay? And our Lord rescues us out from under Satan and from the world, okay? But right here, and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Does it seem like to you, brethren, sisters, church of the living God, when you're out there talking to the walking dead, <laughs> that um, <laughs> it's like you're speaking a foreign language to them? Doesn't, that seem to, doesn't it seem like that to you sometimes? Even though you may speak English, whatever is your native tongue, speaking on to your, um, those of your countrymen, even though you're speaking the same language, you're not on the same page speaking the same things. Because you are of the church of the living God. They are lost. They have not the spirit. Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Now look at this. And they said, the God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days' journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you onto your burdens? Now see, Moses and Aaron went to the uh, Pharaoh with truth. You know, hey, let the Hebrews go. Let us go so we can worship the Lord our God. I don't know who this, who is the Lord. And then he turns his attention back onto the messengers. And uh, verse 5, and, Ber and Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. <clears throat> and the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice unto our God. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. Those of the world regard the words of Scripture, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, as vain words. Don't they? Don't they? Okay, go to Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56, two verses, or excuse me, verses 10 under verse 12. Now, remember the taskmasters. Remember the taskmasters. Isaiah 56, verses 10 under verse 12. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain, from his quarter. Come ye, say they. 
I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Come on, fingers. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 11. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 on to 11. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many, so that contrarywise ye ought rather to forgive him, and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore I beseech you, that ye would confirm your love toward him. Now this is talking about the guy who was um, having relations with his father's wife. And Paul's like, hey, put this guy away, okay? And they did. And he's addressing that again. <clears throat> Verse 9. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. What are his devices? Go to Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. What are his devices? Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now, Revelation chapter 18 is talking about the judgment of the whore, Mystery Babylon. Roman Catholicism. Okay? So, Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 7. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Hmm. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself. Ye shall be as gods. I shall be like, or I will be like the Most High. Excuse me. Okay. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. What are the devices of Satan? Where it says here in verse 2, The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Ye shall be as gods. Lifting up yourself. 
I will be like the Most High. Um, Self-exaltation are the devices of Satan. You know, opening your eyes to see that you will elevate yourself. Self-righteousness. See, the wicked in his pride. The wicked in his pride. Verse 3, check this out. For the wicked, oh, uh, Psalm 10, verse 3. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Abhor means extreme hatred. Covetousness, the Lord abhorreth? You mean our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hates covetousness? Look what some of your covetousness does for some of you. Huh? Willing to go to any lengths to get anything you want? Go to Daniel. Go to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. You know, when uh, the Lord and I were putting this together, he was just showing me this, this, this. It's like, wow, wow. Daniel chapter 4, verses 28 on to verse 30. This is about uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, I personally believe that King Nebuchadnezzar uh, went down to Abraham's bosom. Psst, he's in heaven. I do believe that. I do believe that King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven right now. Absolutely. But before King Nebuchadnezzar was broken of himself, Daniel chapter 4, verses 28 on to verse 30. Now, let's read very quickly verse 3 in Psalm 10. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Okay? Daniel chapter 4, verses 28 on to verse 30. And remember, King Nebuchadnezzar was warned of Daniel. Hey, repent. Break off your sins by doing righteousness, right? And they, um, Daniel said, if you don't do this, you're going to be brought into the wilderness, okay? And chastened. <laughs> but 28 on to verse 30 in Daniel chapter 4. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the king of Babylon, of the kingdom of Babylon, excuse me. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom of for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Look at now Daniel chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 4. The son of King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? Daniel chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 4. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father, father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Okay, so they took that which was sanctified, holy, set apart for the use of the temple, the holy vestments, okay? And they were drinking wine and then making a party with the things that um, his father, Nebuchadnezzar, brought from Jerusalem. And they were drinking out of them. And look at verse 4. 
They drank wine and praised the little G gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Now think about this. They were praising the gods, little G, of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron and of wood and of stone. Very similar makeup to the, um, to the image that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. Very similar, isn't it? But see, they were taking the vessels that came from the temple, number one, using them in a way that they should not have, but number two, with those holy vessels taken from the temple, they were praising false gods with those very vessels that came from the temple. Yeah, yeah. Think about that one for a little bit. Let that roll around in your head, okay? And look now at Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Verses 13 on to verse 15. Luke chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 15. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, mammon money. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. Uh, what does it say here in verse 3 in Psalm 10? For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. In the book of Malachi it says, where it, uh, and now we call the proud Happy? I believe that's in Malachi, right? Right? Those who tempt the Lord. And here these Pharisees were covetous. And look at what our Lord says. Verse 15 in Luke chapter 16. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth, putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Look at that verse. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Verse 3, Psalm 10, For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. Mm. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 under verse 7. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and idolatry and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because think about it. If you're being covetous, you're setting whatever it is you are coveting over right up here, on high. And with some people, that covetousness, uh, they claim to be a Christian, right? Here's the Lord, but when they get involved into their covetousness, what they covet goes higher and higher and higher. Because, what does it say in verse 3 in Psalm 10? 10, for the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire. He shall be as God's. You'll be like the Most High, right? Let's continue. Verse 6 in Colossians chapter 3. For which things sake the 
Wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience. Those who have heard the truth, have heard the true gospel, and want nothing to do with it. Their, their, their wicked heart boasts of their desires. They put their what they want above the truth our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7, In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. When ye lived in them. Okay? Those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, okay, we have been delivered from this. Okay? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that you should uh, obey the lusts thereof. Okay? There again. You get a little bit of that covetousness going in on you, all right? You got to be careful. You got to be very careful. Because you and I, as the church of the living God, we do know what that covetousness is like, right? And we have to be on guard against that. Most definitely. Most definitely. Why is that? 1 Timothy chapter 6. Of course we had to go here. Of course we had to go here. Verses 3 on to verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 3 on to verse 10. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who just said, what? You cannot serve God and mammon. Right? And that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Okay? And to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud. Knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money is the root of all evil. And no coveted after. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after. And we have seen covetousness is likened unto idolatry. And what does it say here in Psalm uh, 10, verse 3? For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. Do you get it? Let's continue. Verse 4. Oh, did, oh wait, wait, wait. Verse 10 in uh, uh, 2 Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Many sorrows. You going after your covetousness, you're going to reap a heavy price for something that will basically fade away in your hands and come to nothing and vanish away as the dust. It's a vapor. Again, do you get it? Verse 4 in Psalm 10. 
The wicked through the pride of his countenance, countenance, his outward appearance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 10 under verse 22. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 10 under verse 22. Close out the chapter. Enter into the rock, lowercase r, and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. What is it? These six things uh, doth the Lord hate, and the very first thing is a proud look. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up. Now, he's mentioning trees and the hills, but these are likened unto people, spirit, soul, and body. That's what a person is, a spirit, soul, and body, okay? Upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, the cedars, High, oaks of Bashan. Oak is a very thick wood, okay? High and lifted up people. All the oaks of Bashan. Hard-headed people. And, up, and upon every high tower. A military thing. High tower, okay? And upon every fenced wall. Fencing your, uh, putting a fence around yourself and stuff like that, okay? Defensed. This is talking about stubbornness. Verse 15. And upon every high tower and upon every fence wall. Verse 16. And upon all the ships of Tarshish and upon all pleasant pictures. All pleasant pictures. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Let's continue. <clears throat> and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. And the haughtiness of men shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the calves of, caves of the earth. Excuse me. For fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. When he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Future prophecy to come to pass. Okay. Making reference unto the time of Jacob's trouble. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. Remember how we read about in Daniel chapter 5? Okay. To go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Mentioned twice, right here in verse 21 and also verse 19. And there's going to be, the scriptures say in the book of Revelation that there's going to be a great earthquake, the like of which the earth has never seen. And uh, verse 22 wraps this up very nicely. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils. For wherein is he to be accounted of? Again, the fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made safe. Or shall be safe. Excuse me. Okay? Go to Daniel chapter 5 again. Check this out. Check this out. Daniel chapter 5 again. Okay? Lord pointed this out to me while uh, getting the notes for this. It's like, whoa! Okay? Daniel chapter 5, once again. Okay? Now, remember we read in verses 1 
through 4 about how Belshazzar took the vessels from the house of Lord, okay, or from the temple, and was making a mockery of the Lord, basically, and praising the gods of gold and his silver with the things sanctified for the use in the temple, okay? Talk about blasphemy. Daniel chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 28. Check this out. Now, because of this, because of what we already looked at in Daniel chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, uh, there was a hand that was sent that wrote something on the wall. And Belshazzar was like, oh, whoa, rightfully so. Then Daniel comes in, and here we go. Verse 17 on the verse 28. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. Yes, he did. The scriptures even refer to our Lord calling Nebuchadnezzar his servant. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, spirit, soul, and body, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive, and whom he would, he set up, and whom he would, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. He knew all this. He saw, obviously, his father's repentance and glory that he gave unto the Lord for what he had done. What did he do with the truth that he saw? What are you going to do with the truth, dear friend? Brother, sister, let's continue. Verse 23, but hast lifted up thyself, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords Thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this, was, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, aperzen. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene. God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Verse 4 in Psalm 10. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all this thoughts. Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tikil, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Therese, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Now, we're, we're going to finish this chapter here. But, okay, Belshazzar was clearly warned 
clearly admonished, clearly rebuked by Daniel. Hey, wake up. Do something about it. Watch this. Look at this. Verse 29. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans slain. And Darius, the Medain, took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. What did Belshazzar do with what he was given? Oh, he, he heard what Daniel said and said, all right, and clothed them up and uh, made a spectacle of him, basically. But he didn't do anything about it. Go to Job now. Go to Job chapter 41. Job chapter 41. Job chapter 41. Let's read verse 4 again. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Job chapter 41. Verses 15 On to the close of the chapter. Verse 15. On to the close of the chapter. One second, brethren. Job 41. Verses 15 on to verse 34. Job 41. Verses 15 on to verse 34. His scales are his pride. Shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. Look at verse 16. One is so near another that no air, no breath, can come between them. Interesting, huh? Verse 18. By his kneesing, a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. A flame goeth out of his mouth, kindleth coals. A contentious man stirs up strife, right? Right. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. Sorrow is turned into joy before him. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Hmm. <clears throat> The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. Hard-hearted, anybody? When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, nor the habergeon. He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of his spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth, upon earth, there is none his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king of 
over all the children of pride. Uh, who who might the Lord be talking about? Talking about Leviathan. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 he is. But uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, please. Oh, you know where we're going. <clears throat> oh. 2 Corinthians chapter, oh. Oh, 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 one second. Where is that? Where is that? <clears throat> All right. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ, apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And his sneezing, a light doth shine. Hello, people. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And of course, go to Romans. Got it. We got to address Romans. Got to address Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And of course, Romans chapter 3, verses 10, on to verse 18. Verse 4 in Psalm 10. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not, God is not in all his thoughts. Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Psalm 10 verse 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways, verse 5, his ways are always his ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for his enemies, he puffeth at them. Go to Psalm 50. Psalm 50. 50.
Psalm 50, verses 16 on to verse 23. Psalm 50, verses 16 on to verse 23. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? See thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. You know, a lot of these people take the authorized version of the scriptures. When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. The thief cometh not but to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that abundantly. <laughs> and hast been partakers, part, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Uh, bid no one God speed, or it were not of the church of the living God, lest you partake in their sins. That's in the book of, uh, I think that's 3rd John. You go find that on your own time. Just paraphrase it. Beg your pardon. Let's continue. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. You know, taking the mighty God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and making him one just like yourself, that you're on the same level. Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, just like King Nebuchadnezzar did. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I shew the salvation of God. Okay? Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 22 on to verse 23. Speaking of the wicked, His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. Now, Look at verse 5 in Psalm 10. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. His enemies. Uh, we have just looked at people who don't want to, in, in, uh, right here in Psalm 50 and in Proverbs right here, their ways are always grievous. That follow their own self, that they follow their own desire, their own mind. They are their own God, see. Okay? Given over to covetousness, that kind of stuff. Okay? Who are the enemies of these types of people? Hmm? Second Corinthians chapter two. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter two. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 17. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place, by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we, those of us who are of the church of the living God, 
are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. And of course, of course, of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 5. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, how they lived out the gospel. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. Doesn't mean work to save yourself. Work out. Walk your walk. Walk your talk. How do you do that? Adhere to the scripture. Frame your life around what the scriptures say for you to do. It can be done, you know. Okay? Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of of them which believe not. And that's a little G, God. We all know, those of us who are of the church of the living God, who's this, who this is talking about. Satan. But if you are not saved, okay, or if you are a babe, it's talking about Satan now, okay? Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Okay? And, of course, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Who is the enemies? That this uh, person whose ways are always grievous and the judgments of the Lord are above, out of his sight. Who are the enemies, for uh, his enemies, for our instruction and in righteousness? Those who preach the truth, the true Jesus Christ, God our Father, of the authorized version of the scriptures, who preach true scriptural salvation. Okay? His enemies are those of us, the church of the living God. 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the lowercase s, spirit of truth, and the lowercase s, of course, spirit of error. Verse 5 in Psalm 10. His ways are always grievous, like judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, those who present truth to this type of person, spirit, soul, and body, or these types of people, spirit, soul, and body, okay? He puffeth at them. Someone who reveals truth. That's this individual's enemies. Okay? Now, verse 6. Now, from verse 6 on to verse 12, pay attention because you are going to see something appear five times at the opening of every single one of these verses from verse 6 on to verse 12. Okay? Pay attention to this. Verse 6. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Verse 6. Okay? Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah, oh, of course we had to look at this. Of course we had to. 
go over this is not grievous, but necessary. Okay? Necessary. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. Okay? Verse 6. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Isaiah 14, 12 to, verse, uh, 12 to 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, the five I wills. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Verse 6 in Psalm 10. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. <laughs> Verses 13 on to verse 21. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Note how he called him Master, not Son of David. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. <laughs> and of course, James chapter 5. James chapter 5. You know, if you are of the church of the living God, and you have been blessed with having lots of do re me You got it rough. More so than we poor. Because at your fingertips, you can get almost anything you want. See, that's why it's better to be with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Money, obviously. Money. Covetousness, which is idolatry. And through that covetousness, what is your end? To satisfy yourself, isn't it? James chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now you got to remember about the book of James. That The book of James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. You have to remember that, but this is instruction on in righteousness. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold! 
The hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and been wanton. Ye have nursed your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Verse 7, talking about what I am showing you that he's addressing the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Latter rain, talking about the future fulfillment of the Jew during the time of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, future prophecy. That's what latter rain is referring to when you all look up latter rain. Future fulfillment for the Jew in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Now, look at verse 7 in Psalm 10. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Psalm 55, verses 9 unto 11. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. Hmm. Okay? And verses 19 onto verse 21 now in Psalm 55, skipping a little bit. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Shelah, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. There's that mention of Fearing God again. Hmm. Isn't that grievous unto some of you, huh? He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. <laughs> and of course, Psalm 74. Psalm 74. 74, excuse me. Psalm 74, verses 10 on to verse 18. O oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? <laughs> Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? Pluck it out of thy bosom. For God is my king, capital K, of old, worketh sal working salvation in the midst of the earth. Talking about when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will rule and reign for a thousand years in Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? <clears throat> Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the head of the dragons in the waters. Leviathan, the dragon, that old serpent, Satan, waters, likened unto people. Thou breakest the head of Leviathan in pieces. See? <laughs> I know, I should have just, sorry. <laughs> Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces. And gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Thou didst cleave the fountain and the flood. Thou driedest up mighty rivers. The day is thine. The night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. 
Thou hast made summer and winter. Remember this, that the enemy hath reproached the Lord, and that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name. Now, Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, verses 1 on to verse 8. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their web shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their going. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Why is that? Because there is no fear of God before their eyes. And the way of peace they have not known. You see? <laughs> now go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Oh, I love the Lord and His Word. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 on to verse 32. Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 on to verse 32. Now, this is future prophecy that's being talked about right here in Daniel chapter 11. This is for our instruction in righteousness. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the provenance. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea. And he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast the vices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. And his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper. And yet 
The end shall be at the appointed time. Okay. Uh, and yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Excuse me. The time appointed. Sorry for that. Then shall he return into the land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Kittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. The abomination that maketh desolate is talking about a man, the son of perdition. Okay? The beast. Inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame by captivity and by spoil many days, making reference to what's going to happen in, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. Look at that. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. With flatteries. Hmm. Hmm. And of course, go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Come on, fingers, work with me. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 12. And then shall that wicked be revealed, and then after the redemption of the purchased possession, after the Lord Jesus Christ calls up his body, the church of the living God. And then, excuse me, shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why are they perishing? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They love not the truth? So fine. The Lord's like, okay, you don't want the truth? Here you go. You want the lie? Here you go. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they might, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Verse 7 in Psalm 10. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and manity. Verse 8. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Proverbs chapter, 10, uh, chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1, verses 10 on to verse 19. Verse 8 in Psalm 10. 
He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the, in the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Proverbs 1, verses 10 on to verse 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Join us. Conform. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They look privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Go now to Jeremiah chapter 22. Jeremiah chapter 22. Verses 13 on to verse 17. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. Remember what we read in James that saith, I will build me a white house and large chambers, and cutteth them out windows, and is sealed with cedar, and painted with vermilion. Shalt thou reign, because thou closest thyself in cedar? Did not thy father eat and drink, and do judgment and justice? And then it was well with him? He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, said the Lord? But thine eyes and thine heart are not but for thy covetousness, and for to shed blood, and for to shed innocent blood, and for oppression, and for violence to do it. Verse 8 in Psalm 10. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Verse 9. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him, draweth him into his net. Okay? Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 7. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 7. And the devil taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, and go to 2 Timothy, chapter 2. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 22 
on to verse 26. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that, with them, that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Yeah, foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Excluding the true babe and novice. Excluding the true babe and novice, of course. <laughs> yeah. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them belief to the acknowledging of the truth. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them Repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Verse 8, let's refresh this. Oh no, verse 9, excuse me. Uh, no, we are in verse 8, uh, verse 9, excuse me. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth to wait, he lieth and wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. Verse 26 in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And that they may recover themse themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by his will. And of course, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. We know that the lion of the tribe of Judah is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And when he come back the second time to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Okay, the thousand year reign that he will be ruling and reigning from in Jerusalem. He's going to be likened as unto a lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Look at this. First Peter 5, verses 8 unto 11. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because the adversary... Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Oh, you mean imitating? Hmm? Trying to replace, maybe? Hmm? The devil as a roaring lion. And our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he comes back, the lion of the tribe of Judah, you see that? As a lion, Satan trying to copy, imitate, replace. You see that? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. 
To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, as a roaring lion, Satan can produce some very good arguments and can make a faith that looks as if it is the faith of the church of the living God. But when you get right down to it, when you strip off everything of that flank, ye shall be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods. I, 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 me, me, me. Your best life now. Verse 10. Verse 10. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. This, this, this was just, oh, I love this. Jeremiah chapter 41. Jeremiah chapter 41. Jeremiah chapter 41. Let's read verse 10 again. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Jeremiah chapter 41, verses 1 on to verse 10. Now it came to pass in the seventh year that Ishmael the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, and the princes of the king, even ten men with him, came unto Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, to Mizpah, and there they did eat bread together in Mizpah. This is after King Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped Jerusalem, took away captives, but he left the poorest of the land, okay? This is after that. King Zedekiah was warned and warned and warned. And here comes Nebuchadnezzar, wipes out Jerusalem pretty much, puts out the eyes of Zedekiah, goes back to Babylon, okay? And King Nebuchadnezzar established this um, Gedaliah as the whatever, in charge of Jerusalem. And Gedaliah was warned of Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah. He was warned of him, but he's like, ah, you're speaking falsely of him. Okay? So, let's continue. Then now, and notice too, that Ishmael ate bread with Gedaliah. an infiltrator who ate bread with this man. Then arose Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and the ten men that were with him, and smote Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, and slew him, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him, even with Gedaliah at Mizpah and the Chaldeans that were found there, and the men of war. See what one infiltrator can do, if allowed to? And it came to pass the second day, after he had slain Galiliah, and no man knew it, that there came certain from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even fourscore men, having their beards shaven and their clothes rent, and having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. Now, before we read verse 6, read verse 10 in Psalm 10. He croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Look at what Ishmael does. And Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it came to pass, as he met them, he said unto them, Come to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, who he killed. It was a trap. And it was so. When they came into the midst of the city, that Ishmael the son of Nathaniah slew them and cast them into the midst of the pit, he and the men that were with him. Look at this. 
Look at this. But ten men were found among them that said unto Ishmael, Slay us not, for we have treasures in the field of wheat and of barley and of oil and of honey. So he forbear and slew them not among their brethren. Wonder what Ishmael was about. Goods. Worldly things. Hmm. Now the pit where Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he had slain because of Gedaliah was it which Asa the king had made for fear of Basha king of Israel. And Ishmael the son of Nathaniah filled it with them that were slain. Then Ishmael carried away captive all the residue of the people that were in Mizpah, even the king's daughters and all the people that remained in Mizpah, whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah, the son of Ahakam. And Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, carried them away captive and departed to go over to the Ammonites. He humbled himself, feigning himself to be someone who was weeping, mourning for what was done. Verse 10 in Psalm 10, he, couch, he croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Very interesting on this. Go to 1 John 2. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 24. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And who is the Father? Our Lord Jesus Christ. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Look at what Ishmael did when he was offered, when he was bribed, don't kill us. He loved the world. And notice how in verse 15, on to verse 17, it leads and it mentions about not loving the world. And who is the little G God of this world? And then he mentions about right here. Verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. Why was that? Because they loved the world. Hey, where's your affection? Lord Jesus Christ and his word. Okay. Good. I hope so. Then why are some of you taken with worldly things? Why are some of you choosing the things of the world over the things that our Lord hates? Our Lord hates things of the world that come from the world. Right here it says, All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Where's your affections at? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. 
But ye, Church of the Living God, have an unction from the Holy One. Uh, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ye have an unction from the Holy One. Oh, what is that? The Spirit of Truth that will guide you into all truth? Who is that? God our Father? Who is that? The Lord Jesus Christ. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Why is that? Because they are one in the same. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? They're one and the same. One God. Okay? Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Let's read verse 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. <laughs> now go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 10. Uh, Psalm 10, verse 10. He croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 10. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, Satan, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, Satan, which gave power unto the beast, the son of perdition. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And now, verse 11 in Psalm chapter 10, which you can also compare with verse 6. He has said in his heart, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. He has said in his heart. Okay. And again, verse 6, he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. 
Ezekiel chapter 28. Oop, oop, oop. Ezekiel chapter 28. Verses 1 under verse 10. Verse 11. He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 1 under verse 10. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am a God, I am God, excuse me, but thou shalt be a man, but thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And if we were to continue reading, you can see that also the Lord is specifically addressing Satan, who was in control, who was uh, ruling, you could say, just Tyrus. Okay? Okay? Now, go to Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. Verses 30 under verse 33. Okay? Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And what we just read in Ezekiel, okay, covetousness, saying, I am a God, or I am God. Yeah, you shall be like the Most High, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. What do you do with truth? What do you do with it? What do you do with it? Oh, it's lovely. You just like to hear it. But what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Jeremiah 23, verses 23 under verse 27. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord? And not a God afar off. 
Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? <coughs> saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts, of their own heart, excuse me, excuse me, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for, uh, for Baal. An indictment, especially around, uh, with these charismatic false prophets out there and stuff like that. Yeah, look at that. Verse 27, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Okay? Now go back to Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel, or excuse me, go forward to Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, and from his loins upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Oh, beg your pardon. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest, what, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that are here of Israel, uh, excuse me, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. Went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. So because of that, what were they doing? Worshipping false gods, gods of their own making. He said unto me, he said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. 
And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the Lord, with their backs toward with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Baal worship, sun, as you went worship. The Catholic priests with the perfectly round Baal sun-shaped cookie, they elevate the host. Baal worship. Mystery Babylon, okay? Roman Catholicism, all right? Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in, therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet... Will I not hear them? And now go to Zephaniah. 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 You know, if you come to this channel, you ought to be used to these uh, long videos. I like to cover a lot of scripture. Zephaniah. Zephaniah, chapter 1. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah, and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from his, this place, and the name of the Kemarims, with the priests, excuse me. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm, and them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. Very quickly. The day of the Lord is at hand. Talking about the second coming. Okay? For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. He hath bid his guests. Okay? When our Lord was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Okay? He was going to go to the cross to make atonement for the sins of the world. But he was offering them the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And of course... Unfortunately, they wanted nothing to do with their king. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that, uh, that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's house, houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. Howl, ye inhabitants of Makatesh, for all the merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles, and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Psalm 10, verse 11. He has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. 
He hideth his face. He will never see it. Verse 13 in Zephaniah chapter 1. Therefore their good shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, and not drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. The day, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to, live, to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by, fire, by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Oh boy. Oh boy, huh? Now, very quickly, look at verse 6 in Psalm 10, okay, on to verse 11. From verse 6 on to verse 11, he has set in his heart, his mouth, verse 7, his mouth, is his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud, okay? Verse 8. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. Verse 9. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. Verse 10. He croucheth. Verse 11. He has said in his heart. 5. Mm. From verses 6 on to verse 11. And how many is that? Verse 6, 1, verse 8, 2, verse 9, 3, verse 10, 4, verse 11, 5. I know you get what I'm getting at with that, right? Right? Now, verse 12, on to the close of the chapter. Verse 12 the psalm turns because from verse 1 on to verse 11, clearly talking about the wicked. Boop, clearly. Okay? Clearly. But here's the turning point in this psalm towards the end. Okay? We're going to read now from verses 12 on to verse 18. And we've got one more stop to compare this with. Verse 12 on verse 18 in Psalm 10. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn God? He has said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Thou hast seen it. For thou beholdest mischief and spite, to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. In other words, please, Lord, make a speedy riddance and a thorough cleaning uh, and getting rid of wickedness. The Lord is, capital K, king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Lord. Thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed. That the man of the earth, earthly, sensual, devilish, unregenerate. That the man of the earth may no more oppress. 
Psalm 102. Psalm 102. You want a psalm that talks about restoration, the plight of the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble? Psalm 102. Psalm 102. <clears throat> Psalm 102. From verse 12. Interesting to note about Psalm 102 and Psalm 10. It changes. Psalm 10, uh, beginning at verse 12, it changes unto arise, O Lord, while uh, describing the wickedness of the devil and those who follow him, those of the world. And when in Psalm 102, from verses 1 on to verse 11, talks about how the Jews are going to come to realize that the Lord is the author of, their, of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Psalm 102, beginning at verse 12, on to the close of the chapter. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time, is come, the kingdom of heaven. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Second coming. He will regard the prayer of the destitute, and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven did the Lord behold the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to lose those that are appointed to death. Psalm 110, verse uh, 16, on to verse 18. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of that the man of the earth may no more oppress. <clears throat> Verse twenty one in Psalm one oh two. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakeneth my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish. But thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Alleluia. Alleluia. The children of thy servants shall continue. And their seed shall be established before thee. The restoration of Israel, the Jew, during the time of Jacob, uh, during, um, during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, the Jew is going to figure it out. And then the Lord comes back with us, his saints, his body, church of the living God. 
So we see, dear friends, that Psalm 10, from verses 1 and verse 11, clearly showing us the wicked. But from verses 12 on to verse 18, praise ye the Lord. You see? <laughs> Well, uh, like I said, brethren, this was, um, the Lord had showed this to me um, a, a day or two ago, but I've been working on other things um, quite intensely. Um, and it was just like, wow, wow, tying these all together, you know? So that is going to be it for this video today, brethren. Um, like I said, very, very soon, I, I'm... I'm aiming for tomorrow, um, Sunday. Not Sunday, it'll be it's coming very soon. Um, and it's not going to be a milk video, okay? It's going to be a lot of me. We're going to be going through a whole lot of scriptures in this upcoming video about uh, Touch Not Mine Anointed. Or Touch Not My Anointed, excuse me. But uh, anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Um, hopefully this um, has helped it. Uh, some of you have been encouraged, edified, whatever by it. I hope so. All praise and glory goes on to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Um, and very quickly too, brethren, I just want to mention and say on behalf of my wife, um, who you will not meet except the Church of the Living God when we are uh, caught up into heaven with the Lord. Uh, then you'll meet my wife. Uh, I, my wife is not going to appear on a video. It's not going to happen. You hold me to that. <laughs> she certainly will. <laughs> uh, anyway, brethren, thank you for so much for watching, if you do. And thank you, all of you. Thank you all so very much for your mercy that you have shown both of us, both me, myself and my wife. Without you, without what the Lord has done through all of you, we would have been long gone. We pray that the Lord recompense every single one of you a thousand fold into your bosom. Thank you. Mere thank yous cannot demonstrate unto you, brethren, how greatly we are, how greatly we appreciate and are, how thankful we are unto the Lord for all of you. It's, it's, Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, we love you. And we will see you in the next video. Okay? <laughs>